So, well, that was page five. I feel like I can continue on page six, but, uh... Oh, actually... That's pretty slow. Okay, you know, let's go. Okay, page six. No one is entering the door to Jake's mansion, so Jane left it and lets, lets herself in. There's almost no crime on Earthsea, so it's almost no one to lock their door. In fact, most doors do not have locks, which has been terribly unfair to the struggling locksmith industry. Once, <laughs> at John's 18th birthday, Dave Strider engaged Jane in a shockingly aggressive debate about an economy in which he accused her of supporting a non-liberal corporate welfare for pointing out this exact problem, which was, well, such a baffling incident that Jane is still thinking about it absolutely at random intervals five years later. She has an honorably business degree for almost every university on the planet. Dave hasn't even finished middle school. What does he know about the effective and ethical rigors of corporate bailouts? Well, Jane thinks with a heavy sigh. Now that she's not running for president, it doesn't really matter, does it? <laughs> Jake? Jane feels rather like a princess in an animated film uh, with the way her voice echoes through the flights of circular staircases. Staircase. The mansion's so dark and cramped. Tall, narrow halls, gothic arcs, and rooms stuffed in all the corners with kitsky junk. I... Okay. Jake has a taste for velvet paintings and fa uh, fantique... Cab... Well, candelabras, Whatever. Candles. Which, it, which mesh less and then harmlessly with the backdrop of his paisley wallpaper. Blue lights filter from the stained glass windows on the top of the floor of the foyer, where, deci where de deceptions, deceptions, de whatever, of Silurian, Silurian, I can't fucking talk, oh my fucking god, sirens lounges against surprisingly tasteful modern backdrops. Fuck art, man, alright? Jane calls his name again, lifting her skirt so that she can climb the stairs one step at a time. From the second stair floor, she hears a sudden and awful noise, boots scrabbling against wood, glass shattering, hard objects hitting the wall, and an unmistakable roar of a rifle firing. She spurs the rest of the staircase and runs down the hall, clack 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 in her expensive but understand understated, un yeah, she has heels, alright, you got that? <laughs> Jake, Jake, where are you? The big oak door at the end of the hallway swings open, spilling orange lamp light into the darkness. Jake steps out, looking ruffled but handsome in the corridor shorts and dressed shirt, buttoned in a mid-sternum... Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay, sorry. Let's read that again. Jake steps out, looking rough, uh, ruffled but handsome in a corridor short and a dressed shirt, buttoned up in a mid-sternum. A mid-sternum, yeah, whatever. There's a smudge of gunpowder on his cheek. His whole face lights up when he sees Jane. Oh, Jane, how unexpected. I'm not, uh, let me not try to fake a British accent. <laughs> oh, are you all right? Well, of course. Why wouldn't I be? I heard horrible noises. I heard a horrible noise. What is all the racket? Oh, this? Jin grins and holds up his rifle, which is still smoking from the muzzle. Just a little morning target practice. He kicks up the door all the way open behind him to show, uh, to show what's up. A circular sitting room, uh, festoons with Christmas lights and paper targets all of which look like as if they've been hit many times with bullets. There are battle uh, bots hanging out from the fireplace at the back, holding an armful of bottles and surrounding the seas of broken glass. You do this in inside your house? He looks at her like she's a stupid one. Well, of course, Jane, where else would I do it? Brings this operation outside would only startle the neighbors. Jane's mouth opens, then hangs there for a moment, and then she decides whether or not this particular conversation on the household prior... Uh, Pro, uh, priority is worth having. Sometimes Jake simply cannot be blamed for his foolish things he does. I don't think it's foolish. He's doing target practice, and you're right. Where would you do this? I guess there's a target place you could go to, but he wants to do it at his house. So, I mean, like, I don't think that's dumb. It's like, yeah, where else would he do that? Why would he do it outside? Like, I mean, I, I don't know. I don't think, I don't think he's, whatever. After all, he literally grew up on, uh, grew up in the woods. Instead, she enters a room and takes a seat in one of the most, uh, in, in the, in the, outstanding cushioned burgundy, whatever, chairs, careful to step around the puddles of cracked glass. I must ask Jane. I must ask Jane. It seems that you are rather frazzled. Are you, sh are, are you sure you aren't the one who's not all right? Jane rests her temple in her palm. Jake grabs another of his, another of his ridiculous fake Victorian chairs by the back and swivels around so he's sitting across from her. Have you talked to Dirk lately? Er, not exactly. I would say that I have been I had that I have been talked to by Dirk, but the communi the communication has certainly have not been two sided. Jesus, you've been ignoring him? Okay, good. 
Ah, yes, it seemed that we were on the same boat then. I haven't heard from him. I stopped by at his workshop, but then I was locked. Oh, so Dirk's not responding. If he was in there, he wouldn't come out. Dirk was one of the, uh, was the uh, one person on Earth Sea who took the state of the locksmith industry with serious with the seriousness it deserved. Holy shit! Jake scoffs and flops his hand and flops a hand. Both actions are dismissive. I don't see what all the ruckus is. Our good schmuck Dirk fancies himself a dark and tortured soul. Cutting us off is not entirely out of his will house. Yes, but not like this. It's been a year since he's done a full blackout on us. Oh, I'm terribly worried. Yeah, I kind of am too. You're worried far too much, Jane. Life has been, become so peaceful on this new planet of ours that I suppose Derek has merely tired himself of this idyllic life. It's either he's driven permanently or temporarily insane. That's my theory, at least. Maybe it's a Tommy rot, but I have faith that Dirk will be back. After all, where where is he gonna go? You seem rather cavalier about this, like even more cavalier than you usually are. Jake laughs, all uneven, and runs his hand through his attractively tousled hair. Yeah, I'm worried. I must admit, I'm rather half rat at the moment. You're what? <laughs> Sorry, that was a pretty obscure way of putting it, wasn't it? I mean, what I meant to say was, I've been powdering, I've been powdering my hair quite a bit today. He makes a motion like knocking back a bottle. Jane side eyes the idly battle bot, flushed with empty wine bottles, then side eye Jake. First thing in the morning? Well, I need the bottles for my target practice, Jane. I couldn't just pour the wine down the drain. That'd be a waste. Oh, okay, so he's drunk right now. Jane frowns and leans forward on his knee so that she can examine Jake more closely. She sees it now. Unspe unspecifically precise movements that come from over-correcting drunken body language. Then unfocus of the eyes. That was very detailed. That was a very detailed thesis he had on Dirk's potential psychology. Almost like he's been given it a good thing. She knew that Jake and Dirk were not officially together, and that had not been for some time, but their lives were still inexorably intertwined on a basically every level for some reason she did not understand. One might even say codependently. No matter whoa, what he said, this had to be affecting him as well. Jane lets out a fluttered, a fluttered breath. You know what, Jake? You're right. It really would be a waste. She pushed out her chair and goes to receive one of the unopened wine bottles and sits over the fireplace. She all They're all screw tops, because Jake isn't that classy. In fact, he isn't classy at all. His veneer of classiness is about as authentic as an off-brand Halloween mask. Jane has no idea why she can't get him out of it, get him out of her system, even after all these years. Wait, is Jane trying to, like, do something? Okay, she braces herself on the mantle and knocks her head back, taking a long, uninterrupted swig right in front of the bottle. Jeepers, Jane, slow down, says the one who's been drinking. Jane keeps gloping to drink. She drinks until she can't stand it, then breaks off, then breaks off. Shaking her head and letting out an ungraceful hiss. Golly, that's cheap. Mm, that's cheap. Her vision is already swimming. Spilling a bit of wine on herself, she spins around and stares at the silent battle bot. It's got his hands out, waiting for her to hand over the bottle. Could you leave us alone, please? What are they? What's going on? I, it's like I'm. Always, I, I'm just confused. I'm just reading. Like it's like I can't get any context of what's happening. It's just stuff's happening. <laughs> The battle bot tips its head at her with a click or with a click and then looks at Jake who traitorously offers the exact zero backup. Dejectively, the bot shuffles away out of the room, but not before dropping every single bottle it was holding so that they make as much noise as possible when hitting the floor. It slams the door behind. Ah yes, Jane thinks. The scorched earth policy. That robot was indeed programmed by Dirk Strider. Jake is staring at Jane wide eyed behind his spectacles. Jane, I must ask, are you quite all right? Actually, no, I'm not quite all right. I will say, you really seem like you've got your morbs. She staggers back at her seat and takes another swig of the disgusting wine. I canceled my presidential bid. What? I understand their impression that you were awfully shuffled about that. I was incredibly shuffled about it, Jake, but Dirk called me and before he disappeared on me, he told me cancel everything, so... Jane puts her face in her hands miserably. I canceled everything. Why, Jane, do you really think you need Dirk to run for president? I know that he has set himself up for, as your planet, planet, whatever, but it seemed like you are you have everything you need to win the day without him. Jane looks up at Jake for between her fingers and under her bangs. 
Well, yes, I suppose I could run a successful presidential campaign on my own merits, especially since Derek and I developed the most of our strategy together. But now that I pulled out here, now that I pulled out, I can't just go back and tell them I changed my mind. That would be so embarrassing. It would make me look like a wishwashy. I can't see the headlines now calling me a terminal flip flopper. Also, somehow it just doesn't seem right without Dirk. Jake press, uh, press, presses the wine bottle from her. Yeah, he pries the wine bottle from her hand gently as he takes a drink from it, less gently. <laughs> Dirk has the manner about him, does not? Does he not? A way about him that makes you feel like whatever you do, as long as it does not involve him, it doesn't count for Dirk. For Dick. <laughs> does he sound a little bitter? Jake blinks at him. I haven't had thought about it that way, but yes, ever since I talked to him, I felt strange. Her her, bo her whole body is numb and floaty, sure, but <laughs> sure, blah. Her whole body is numb and floaty. Sure, she chucked the wine, but it's strange that I've gotten drunk so fast, isn't it? Especially since she spends several nights a month drinking much harder and fancier drinks at investor diners. Jake presses the bottle back and she takes another drink. Jake, pre yeah, passes the bottle, not presses. Strange how? Strange like you just explained, like nothing I do matters. I should be more upset that I've spoiled my chances at running for president, but for some reason why, I find myself not really caring. And that's what I'm exactly what I'm so upset about. The fact that I don't care. Instead, what did Jake s scoot his chair close? Wait, whoa, whoa, what? Okay, when did Jake scoot his chair closer? They're sitting packed so tight now, his bare knees are brushing hers. The air between them... Ah. The air between them is wine-soaked. Jane takes another serious look at him and his elegant jaw lines, dark eyelashes, his handsome nose. It's really unfair that he's so good-looking while also being so Jake. But this is nice, she thinks. When was the last time they talked? Really talked. It's been such a long time since she's almost she's almost surprised how good he's being to her right now, considering she walked in on, on and peak yeah she walked in on him and peak English disaster mode. Why is it always this easy to talk to him? Maybe because of the wine. Maybe just because she wants to. Jane reaches out and sets his hand on his thigh. Okay. She leans closer until she can feel his breath on her face. Okay. Oh, this is mortifyingly to admit, but I've been thinking that perhaps I've been doing the wrong thing with my life. Instead of thinking, instead of all this business politicking, I've been doing what I'd really like. What I'd really like is to settle down and raise a family. <laughs> okay. Yay. Does that sound ridiculous? Why? That doesn't sound ridiculous at all. It's just, it's just that I've been, I've never heard you just express such sentiments before, except of course for the time when we were under my, uh, we were under mind control. Oh yeah, I forgot. I forgot that. I, yeah, I forgot. How can I forget that happened? And had me trust up in your lair as a, as a point, as a pontiff, or whatever. Well, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I should try it again. But had me trust up in your lair as you pontificated villainously about using me as a breeding stud to create a blood lineage for your incubant corporate space empire. <laughs> oh, you still remember that. Jane, you're one of the most cherished friends. I couldn't possibly forget a single moment we spent together, no matter how sexually uncomfortable the situation may have been. <laughs> Jane feels herself turn red. Why did she think this would be so easy? Jake Illis was the kind of slut. What well, was kind of a slut, true, but their relationship was an emotional minefield. She slides her hand down her, the cup of his knee. Her thumb, her <laughs> rolls her thumb into the dip of, it, of the joint there, and tries to remember the drunken advice on matters of seducing Jade, of seduction Jade gave her once when she was foolish enough to take the weekend off and go on one of her and Jake's expeditions. Oh. So they were doing what? What did they do? I don't understand. <laughs> she can't, for the life of her, remember the substance of any of her lessons, though. Jake is still staring at her, drunken and enraptured. She ventures deeper into his personal space. Well, Jake, it doesn't always have to be that way. Putting business first, ignoring the good things in life, chasing profit, I'm sick of it. I think I can be loving. I can be a good wife for the kind of man who needs a good wife in his life. Like, Say, an eligible bachelor with a hundred empty rooms in his house and no one to help clean them. Who has been recently and mysteriously abandoned by his long team companion or whatever he has. Oh, Jesus Christ, Jane. Here you are, right? You're direct as fuck. I like that. Someone handsome and lonely who knows me well enough that we need not to fear showing each other our less savory sides. Such as being drunk at nine in the morning. Oh, Jake, isn't that a dream? Oh, God. This is, this is nice. 
Jake slants close and casting a shadow over his face. His eyes are so green, they're glittering with naked adoration for her. It's all for her. He nudges a knuckle under her chin and tips a face towards him. Oh, yeah, Dirk and Jake fans are not having a fun time right now. <laughs> Jane. He's so close to Jane, he thinks he might kiss her. She shuts her eyes and lets her husky wine breath wash over her face. Instead of kissing her, he says, Damn. I say this sincerely as one of her oldest and dearest friends. I hope that you have luck fun I'll kill you, Jake. <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. <laughs> I hope that you have luck in finding a charming and brisky bloke who will summarily impregnate you with as much swiftness as possible and be a responsible father for your children. There is nothing for you I want more. Jesus Christ, Jake. What's wrong with you? I don't... So does he not want to do it? Is that it? Right? <laughs> Jane. Dot, dot, dot. Jane opens... Op Jane's mouth drops open. What was she expecting? But Jake doesn't register her mortified and frustration either. He just keeps smiling and gazing to her eyes, warm and drunk. Well then... With a deep sigh, Jade shoves Jake off her and stumbles back where her horrendous taste wine stored. She pops open the bottle of brine smelly Moscato and tips it back. This embarrassing encounter isn't going to forget itself. Wow. Alright. Jeez Louise. Holy crap. That's funny as hell. I'm sorry. Damn. How long is this? Uh, gotta be Gamzy now? Jesus Christ. <sighs> Alright, well, let's just go with this one as well. John's been sending a uh, seven. No, hold up. Let's just go. Yeah, page seven. John's been spending a lot of time with Roxy lately, which is also means spending a lot of time with John and Callie, which is awkward, but fine. Which also means spending a lot of time with Gamzee, which is awkward, but not even remotely fine. John, Roxy, and Callie are taking a stroll through downtown New Prospect. Gamzee's here, too, a couple of feet behind John, doing essentially the same thing that the other three are doing, which is walking at, leisurely pay, at a leisurely pace, but he's being so weird about it, you can't really call it strolling. It's more like he's holding court while somehow remaining in motion. Ever since he popped out of that fridge smelling like, sweaty f smelling like a sweaty foot, He's been all wise and sage-like. John considers if he were using these two descriptions out loud, where's my water? I'm thirsty. He'd make air quotes while saying them. He'd then say Gamzee's acting almost like a priest, which is a word he'd almost make air quotes around. Do how insanely full of shit John still believes he him to be. Mm. Roxy and Callie, however, apparently do not believe him to be full of shit for some reason. Isn't this nice, huh? <laughs> Gamzee's leading a line of adorable chess pieces trailing behind him, telling them stupid... I don't know why I'm calling them chess pieces. Whatever. Fake Zen stuff. Like, you gotta stop... You gotta stop the smell the seed fronds, my dude. Not to be spe uh, speci uh, spe specious or anything, but the sight is kind of worrying because John knows all too well how susceptible these guys are to grass group Paulus or whatever. He has it on a good authority that virtually any schmuck can blunder into a crowd of them and say a few inspirational words and incite a revolutionary fervor among the masses. John tries his best to ignore it and walk ahead, but Roxy loops her arm around him and pulls him back. We're here, check it. <laughs> yeah. Where where's here? Me and the Cal me and Callie's favorite cafe. Alright, cool. It's a nice place. Big oval windows, flowers, and all the tables. It's got a French-ish aesthetic. John says ish because everything on Earth Sea is sort of ish. Alternish, Durst-ish, Japanese-ish. He'd even describe the skies being kind of bluish sometimes, even more turquoise-ish than anything. Too crisp and bright like old Earth skies seem to be through a pair of tinted novelty glasses. John doesn't mean to be cynical about it, but I guess that the mood i guess that's just the mood he's in maybe it has something to do with the fact that callie insists on including including an unbelievably smelly clown on an otherwise perfectly pleasant stroll <laughs> that's it we're going wait that's it we're going to the co coffee shop i got out of bed for this lmao oh john you're so funny oh no come on john i i forgot oh how can i forget john i need you to go fix the cannon hey um 
You had your nice break. I forgot that you had a job to do. Hurry up and do your job. No, seriously, Roxy, I just... I mean, I feel like I haven't left my house in years. And with all the stuff that's been going on, like Rose's illness, with all the stuff about the political situations, is it really a good idea for us to be having a picnic and going out for coffee shops? Oh, John, you are so you worry so much about things that you have no control over. Like I said the other day, it's time for us to leave the ugly things behind us. Yeah, for real, John. Can't you just enjoy what a beautiful day it is? I know I'm enjoying it since I get to spend spend it with you like I've always been wanting. Holy crap! You have? Yeah, duh. She tugs at him against her side and rests her head on his shoulder. Fuck, I'm getting the John Roxy I want, but he won't go back and fix the cannon. She's a bit taller than him in her, in her nice shoes. It's kind of awkward. She feels uncomfortable to him. She looks more, she looks more for her, uh, damn, I can't, I'm so, I'm kind of flustered right now. Feels uncomfortable to him. What the fuck? Looks more, what? What? She's a bit taller than him in her nice shoes. It's so it's kind of awkward. Feels uncomfortable to yeah. Okay, and looks more for her. what? I'm skipping that. But he's enjoying the attention, sort of. He misses her the way she used to be when the two of uh with the two of them were cl close as kids. She she's laying on it like a little thick for his benefit right now. While he can appreciate that it can kind of be difficult to rekindle a friendship after it's gone cold for a while. John wishes the rekindling period would hurry up and end already so he can go back to shooting the, sh the, shooting the shit like normal. Roxy drags him to the cafe. To the, the cafe. So John's not having a good time. It seems like Roxy's trying to force it a little bit and John's just like, alright, come on. like. God damn it, man. Roxy drags him to the cafe. Callie doesn't... Yeah, where's John? Where are you at? Uh, you know, I'm gonna leave you over there. Callie doesn't follow him in for some for reasons I can only guess at. He catches a glimpse of her through the window, a little forlorn. Gamzee is at her side like a faithful dog. He can't hear what they're saying. Outside, Callie claps her hands in the direct and wistful expression through the cafe window. Uh, through the cafe window, foot traffic splintering lazily around her and Gamzee as they s stand in this busy street. At high noon, her little body casts almost no shadow on the cobblestone road. <sighs> What's shaking, sis? You look bummed out at all as fuck. Oh, wait, you look bum all the fuck out. How can you be feeling down when you getting all redeemed and shit up in here? Oh, it's just, can't you see what's happening with Roxy and John? Ah, uh, shut the fuck up. Callie, I don't know, I don't want to sound un un unsympathetic, but I want my John Roxy. So it's like, I don't care. <laughs> Kinda. Gamzee stares through the window. Roxy's leaning across the table and dabbing under the corner of John's mouth with a napkin. John looks very confused because they aren't actually eating or anything. Gamzee stares at this for a long time. It's like, is hanging out with Callie different than hanging out with like a human being? Like, like, like did Callie get together with Roxy and then Roxy just didn't think it'd be what she expected? Does she really want like some in? I don't. Ah! All right. Gamzee stares at this for a very long time, his mouth lolling open as he contemplates what's transpiring with the closet, uh, fast slime to, what the fuck, whatever that says. The closest to the wisdom he can muster. He puts up one of his hug, uh, huge hands on Callie's narrow shoulders, all comfort-like. Oh yeah, for sure, your girl Roxy's all globing deep in that dude dank nook, and in, in that dude's dank nook. Yeah, well, I can't say I didn't see this coming. It's all happening so fast. I thought for sure I'd have more time with her. Jesus fucking God. I don't like what's happening now. I don't like it. This is so bitter fucking sweet. People said, oh, what a motherfucker like me do. Wait, are you, don't you, ah, okay, here we go. And the fuck shit begins. I'm sorry, I can't read this like good. I'm just, I'm, I'm I'm reading this very sporadically because like this is getting me all fucked up right now. It's all I'm gonna read this again. It's all happening so fast. I thought for sure I'd have more time with her. What a motherfucker like me do. Gamzee leans in so that his face is level with Cali. His grin shows every single one of his teeth. Miraculously, his breath smells worse than his body. Holy shit! Motherfucking do something about it. No. Yeah. No. 
Gamzee, no, please, it's fine. I might be sad, but John has made his choice, and we must all live with the repercussions of that. I'm sure that Roxy would be very happy with him. Now, we're all going to be very happy. I truly believe that. Callie, what's wrong with you? What? I don't like this. I don't like this. <laughs> Callie walks away, looking somewhat less than very happy. Gamzee remains standing in the front of the cafe, still not entirely convinced he should be motherfucking doing something about it. John notices him there, just outside the window, leering at him and Roxy. It's his presence is here and vacant. Callie's nowhere to be seen. Uh, Roxy? What's up? Gamzee, he's staring at us like it's kind of creeping me out. Oh, don't worry about that. He gets stuck like that sometimes. Stuck? All wonked out and shit. I think he's got brain damage from being burned down. It's so sad. Is it? <laughs> Roxy sips, his t sips her tea. Her purple lipstick leaves a stain on the fine china. God damn, she's wearing purple lipstick! <laughs> Oh, I'm having a bad time. Yeah, John, it totes sad. He never has a chance. He never had a chance with this kind of life he had. What a tragic, misunderstood figure. Crying, As Roxy sighs and spreads her spears her cherry atop of her cheesecake with an absurdly tiny dessert fork, and it was it, that it was served with. She pops it in her mouth with a pouty little lip pop. Roxy. Starting staring directly at John with her eyes half lidded. He thinks she might be trying to be sexy, but it's a bit distracted by the sight of Gamzee lumbering in the cafe with all the grace of a M whatever Sasquatch sporting an epic erection. He puts both his hands on back he puts both of his hands on the back of Roxy's chair and looms over her. Without breaking eye contact with John, Roxy scoops a spoonful of cheesecake and feeds it to him. Hey Rox Oh, okay, Gamzee, do something about this. I don't know I don't this is not right! This is not right! <laughs> Cat, fucking, I don't want Callie to sit there and like, not, like, it's like she just got dropped off like the face of the earth because John's better. Roxy, because Roxy's her fucking aspect of the void. What, she just cared about Callie and then forgot about her and watched John? Like, I don't, I don't know, I don't know. And then, and then freaking John's not really feeling it. And then fucking Gamzee's stinking and, oh my God. <sighs> Callie went all running off. Oh, I hope she's feeling all right. Roxy, what the fuck? She's motherfucking fine. She says some noise about cause of what John did. We're all gonna be one happy family or fucking ninjas for motherfucking ever. <laughs> what? <laughs> Games, you're one silly dude. To be honest, pretty psyched to see you going through all this redemption shit. I bet you're gonna make a baller part of our greatest assemble if you're given the chance. John attempts to furge it. Fur for, 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 yeah, whatever. Jester his approval with the entire situation towards Roxy by vaguely swiping his neck in a horizontal direction with his fingers. But he doesn't notice. Instead, she puts his fork down and slides her chair out and springs to her feet with an abundance of newfound enthusiasm as he's been struggling to understand. BRB, gonna hit the ladies' room. Back in a gif, suckers. Um, alright. John and the date repul and John and the date's repulsive third wheel watches as she scurries in the back of the establishment. The moment the door in the bathroom closes, Gamzee lumbers into sitting position across the table from John, without the solid de deviation of his heinously awkward com comportment. He puts his forearm on the table in front of him and folds his hand and gazes into John's eyes with his what he has come to identify as Gamzee's signature brand of fox serenity. Serenity, my fucking guy. <laughs> My dude and my ninja alike. My horn. Uh, no, horn. Yeah, my horn dog. My horn to the motherfucking dog. Waiter, help! And John desperately waves to the attractiveness of a service in hopes that it will provide a social buffer for the appalling interaction that is presently taking place. But no people seem to be close enough to heed his request. Ah, I see what a fucking I see what's fucking up, my good veteran bro, my my good vetter brother. As all I can say is that the game was recognized as a wait all. I need the yeah okay. I see what's fucking I see what's fucking up, my good vetter brother. All about I can say is game recognizes motherfucking game. You got no secrets from this motherfucking egg uh, egg boy. A man stays locked in another man's hunger trunk long enough and ain't got much left to fucking hide from another. I actually, that wasn't even my fridge, it was James. I mean, we basically got the same fridge. 
Shut the fuck up. I'm getting real at the motherfucking run. Real as a motherfucker right now. I've been redeemed. I've been redeemed, yo. I said my so I said my sorries and redeemed the shit out of myself. Didn't you see? Uh, yeah. So, it's incumbent on a motherfucker to spread the redemption. You should get your redemption on too. My choice, my choiciest of dudes. My dankest of dogs. See, a motherfucking knows you got this bitch of a rope. It's the time to pull her to, what? Okay, I gotta read, yeah, let's do that again. My dank is of dogs. See, a motherfucker knows. You got this bitch on a rope. It's time to pull her into your tent. I can smell it on you, brother. You've wasted your years letting this premium of a hoe slip through your fingers. Yeah, kinda, you dumb fucking idiot. <laughs> Less fucking considerable than any crude stunt I pulled in my day, I must tell you. A capital motherfucking crime to be squandering earth pussy like that. Yeah, kinda, you fucking idiot. Holy shit. Yeah, that's kinda what I think right now, too. But I'm all getting in your back, but I, I, I'm all getting in your back here, bro. I can be your wingman in this can't, in this carnal fucking carper. I said that wrong, probably. I can help a little, I can help a little bitch like you romantically redeem his sorry ass. Let a motherfucker help a motherfucker out. Her popcorn skillet pinging hot for you already. You just need a tight, you just need a tight and loyal boy like me to start shoveling in the corn. Wow. Look at Gamzee trying to be a wingman right now. I, you know what, Gamzee? My boy, I can appreciate you trying to help my boy John get Roxy. Because, you know, it should have happened a long time ago. But at the same time, he should be trying to save the cannon right now. So it's like... Thinking it's unwise to break eye contact with this lunatic, John nods very slowly as he listens, while taking a secret snap of his ghoulish face to send the of his ghoulish face to send Terezi, before John submits his tag to the photo with the message, I absolutely fucking hate this. Yeah, so I kinda hate this sucks. I like this and it sucks. Bitter fucking sweet. I can't believe this happened. Why this happened? Why why? Why? But anyways, guys, hope you guys like this let's read. Uh Supposedly, there's 41 pages, so holy crap. Uh, I don't know how much of a present I am in the Homesuck community, but I think that a whole bunch of Homesuck artists should get together and kind of like animate, kind of like animate these epilogues. Like, you know how Homesuck has, like basically this is like the pester log, and then after that, this is like the, narr the narration. We need pictures. We need we need someone to like take these epilogues and make in the pictures. We need, we need an unofficial web comic of these epilogues, like, you know, we can go on MS Paint fan adventures. Someone get a whole bunch of artists. You know, pretty cool idea. You know, just trying to you know tell your homes like friends. Maybe you can get something rolling. But all right then, uh, I'll catch you guys in the next episode. Night of Heart Audi. Wink, wonk, wink, wonk, wink, wonk, wink, wonk, 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 wink, wonk. Bye, Dave. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, man. I don't know what to do, man. The outros it sucks. I can't make cool outros. Maybe if I get more better with editing. Or maybe I should just not do cool outros and just say bye. So, I'm just say bye. As they clash together. Bye. Yeah. Ah, you dumb, stupid dog.